This is the iPhone 11 Pro, and these are the most powerful and most advanced iPhones that we have ever built. But Apple isn't innovating like it used to. I'm not really that impressed by this phone. The iPhone 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max are Apple's newest phones, and both tout a triple camera setup. No question, my favorite part about iPhone. But this is not new. There isn't a lot of wow factor in it, I don't think. As many diehard Android fans will remind you again and again, whether you asked or not, Apple is not the first to have three cameras. In fact, it's one of the last smartphone manufacturers to include a wide-angle lens on its phones. Why did it take Apple that long to go with a wide-angle camera? LG added an ultra-wide-angle lens to its G5 and V20 phones in 2016, and Samsung introduced it on the Galaxy S10 and S10 Plus in early 2019. Over the years, Samsung was really pushing the boundaries of cameras. And besides cameras, Samsung has experimented with folding screens, mobile desktop interfaces, gesture controls, and more in the past year. So why is Apple, the company that wrote the book on smartphones, resting comfortably on technology customers are already extremely familiar with, like cameras, and taking a back seat when it comes to smartphone innovation? Apple spent a record amount on research and development this year, but the phone looks the same as it did last year. Apple has undeniably been a hardware pioneer since its inception. I skate to where the puck is going to be, not where it has been. And we've always tried to do that at Apple. Products like the Macintosh, iPod, and especially the iPhone paved new roads in the technology market. The Apple II redefined the personal computer in 1977 thanks to the Apple-designed Disk 2 floppy disk drive. The Macintosh brought together a graphical interface with an easy-to-use mouse and keyboard setup in a compact design, and for a price that was not astronomical. The iPod blew people's minds with its small form factor, storage capacity, ease of use, and design. All of this arguably led up to the creation of the iPhone in 2007. We do still see big innovations in things like the iPad moving to Face ID, getting rid of the home button, and things like that, but it's not as like, oh my gosh, crazy like it used to be when the first iPhone came out. And to unlock the phone, I just take my finger and slide it across. All right, you wanna see that again? Go to sleep. And then there's iPhone's biggest rival. I'd like to tell you about something I'm really excited about. It's called Android. Android was acquired by Google in 2005, two years before Apple released its first iPhone, though Android was originally developed for phones with buttons, not touchscreens. Android is an open source mobile operating system that first showed up on the T-Mobile G1 by HTC in 2008. It allowed tech companies to focus on hardware instead of software, and now holds 76% of the global market share for mobile operating systems, leaving Apple's iOS at a mere 22%. All designers can create whatever they want out of Android, whatever device size, screen size. Android-based companies have a roster of smartphone firsts that later found their way to Apple products. Motorola built a fingerprint sensor into its Atrix 4G phone two years before the iPhone 5S brought Touch ID to the iPhone. Also in 2011, Samsung brought big phones into the mainstream with its Note series, creating the quote, phablet, or phone-tablet hybrid, something Apple took note of for its Plus and Max versions of its iPhones, starting with the 6 Plus in 2014. That's a good indication of a healthy competitive ecosystem, is where you have different players having different features and leading with them and then others following and, and ultimately consumers on both sides getting better features, better phones, better experiences. One of the most consistently upgraded features of any smartphone is the camera. Each year it's more megapixels, better nighttime photography, more lenses and other upgrades. Samsung has been a big player in the smartphone camera game longer than Apple even, starting in its flip phones. Over the years, Samsung was really pushing the boundaries of cameras. Um, we started to see pixels do it. Huawei now is really pushing the boundaries. Despite Android's shiny new features lead on the iPhone, it was the iPhone that gave us the modern day smartphone. Think about the way that you use your phone or any touchscreen device. Pinch to zoom in and out of an image, flick to scroll, even something as simple as typing on a virtual keyboard. These were all things Apple came up with. 
I just take my finger and I scroll. That's it. And so I can just move them further apart and stretch the image. In the years since, Apple hasn't always been the first to innovate, but iPhone fans continue to be surprised by the updates like the App Store in 2008, Siri in 2011, Touch ID in 2013, and Force Touch in 2015, among others. Samsung and similar companies on Android, they like to push the boundaries. Uh, whereas Apple kind of can't do that. It only has a few models. It can't really push a half-baked feature. I think this, is, this story here is the power of sort of reduced expectations. <laughs> like Apple came on stage and they didn't make any grandiose proclamations. They didn't say they were going to save the world. They said the battery lasts a lot longer, the camera's better, the screen's brighter. This is going to work a little bit better. And all of those things are true. I think some people were disappointed. Um, I think people will always be disappointed if they set their expectations too high. I also don't think it helps that Apple does a lot of those one more things. Kind of like the Marvel movies, when they put those after credit trailers, you almost kind of expect them. When you don't get them, you're like, what happened? That doesn't mean people stop tuning into those beloved Apple announcements. 1.9 million people were watching Apple launch new products on YouTube. That's a staggering number. That's a huge number of people that are basically signing up to get direct marketing directly in their eyeballs from Apple's leaders. But while past Apple keynotes have seen the introduction of new authentication processes or the removal of legacy staples like the home button, this year's keynote was very clearly focused on cameras. A few years ago, Apple revealed they had 800 people working on the iPhone camera. Uh, I'm sure that's even higher now. I think it's a place where Apple sees that, you know, its expertise in software and its expertise in hardware can match up and they can do something that other companies can't. During the 2017 keynote, Apple spent just 10% of the iPhone X announcement discussing the camera system. In the 2018 keynote, it spent 27% of the iPhone XR announcement discussing the camera system. In its most recent keynote, Apple spent 49% of the iPhone 11 Pro announcement discussing the camera system. This makes sense, as cameras are one of the most important features on a smartphone according to customers. The one thing you can never buy, that you can never spend money on, is better pictures after the fact. But people are divided on whether or not we even need better smartphone cameras. Cameras have gotten really good, but also good enough, and that happened probably three or four years ago, where you had pictures that were great, and they're still great when you look back on them, but maybe there were some small changes in lighting or things like that. There's a certain point where the camera is good enough, and I'm starting to think we're getting very close to that point. On average, phones today uh they have very good uh, image quality or um, they can show, I mean, I mean the high-end phones, right? And they are showing a very good image quality, but still they are not at the trustability level that I have with my DSLR. In the beginning, though, Samsung might have been less innovative and more imitative, getting the company into hot water with Apple. You can do multi-finger gestures on it, and boy, have we patented it. <laughs> so, the iPhone maker filed a complaint in 2011 about Samsung's alleged emulation of Apple's intellectual property, including the design of its phone and operating system. Quote, Instead of pursuing independent product development, Samsung has chosen to slavishly copy Apple's innovative technology, distinctive user interface, and elegant and distinctive product and packaging design, in violation of Apple's valuable intellectual property rights. End quote. This dispute was settled in 2018, with Apple receiving $539 million from Samsung. And even when Samsung does innovate on its own, beyond adding another camera, at times those innovations can come at the cost of quality. Take the Samsung Galaxy Fold, for example. Though Samsung wasn't the first phone company to release a foldable smartphone, it was the largest company to do so and created the most buzz around the technology, at least in the US. But the phone has not been in good standing, reporting numerous problems with the screen and hinge mechanism. You know, there's nothing really stopping Apple from probably going out and buying foldable screens from Samsung soon and trying them, but we might not see a device that folds from Apple for a year or longer 
because it usually sits down and tries to get that right. It doesn't necessarily go out and experiment as much as other companies like Samsung does, for better or worse, but I think it is safe for Apple to be playing to its strengths and what it knows consumers want, which is, like I said, battery life and cameras. Apple has been putting more and more emphasis on its cameras, and that is in large part due to the company's increasing dependence on safe, familiar technologies to please customers. The iPhone is still the most important thing to Apple, hands down. And because it's such an important product to the company, they can't take too many risks. Um, so you, you'll see them taking risks in other places. It also gives the company room to explore and expand its services along with other products we might not have seen yet. Just because they're working on projects they haven't announced, you know, their automotive, their autonomous vehicles, you know, uh, augmented reality, maybe a pair of, of headset, a pair of glasses, that doesn't mean that they don't have a lot of people working on the software and the hardware for the new iPhones. It's definitely the number one corporate priority inside of Apple, this, this uh, regular one-year launch cycle. If you strengthen the, the, the things that work around the iPhone, you make the iPhone stronger and you give it more resilience against the competition, even if the competition might have something better. And Apple's safety regarding the iPhone has not hurt the brand. Apple has built an ecosystem that customers enjoy and don't want to leave. If you have an iPhone, you're used to iMessage, you're used to getting those blue bubbles. You've probably spent a lot of money on apps from the App Store. Uh, you may have a Mac or other Apple products, AirPods, Apple Watch. So I think the whole ecosystem is, is more important than any feature improvement in, in the camera. And what if there's just not that much more we can do with smartphones? It's hard to innovate on everything every year. So screens, OLED panels are getting brighter, but how do you show that? The same thing with cameras. How do you innovate so that people can see it? And I think maybe that's why we saw the wide angle lens added onto the camera so people actually see what is changing. And so the innovation isn't as wowing as it used to be. Now, I wanna show you something incredible. In the late 2000s, Apple pioneered the modern smartphone industry but it hasn't wowed audiences in a few years. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Innovation for the sake of innovation can be clumsy and lack quality. A recent poll suggests the camera is one of the top five most important features in a smartphone. Apple ticked that box on the iPhone 11 Pro lineup. The same poll also suggests battery life, ease of use, memory, and durability as important to phone buyers, most of which were addressed during the most recent iPhone announcement. Inside, there is a lot of improvement. There's, you know, chip stuff, there's camera stuff, there's software tweaks. It's just not the headline improvements that they were doing, you know, five years ago with bigger screens and, you know, going from 32-bit to 64-bit. I think Apple along the way has started to figure out what sells phones, and that's battery life and cameras. This begs the question, does Apple need to innovate like it used to if it can simply deliver exactly what customers want? I mean, they're going to sell tens of millions of them. That's, that's a fact. 